connected with Inspired Classroom Way Valley. <laughs> and we've got Ryan Schmaltz with Montana FWP. And we are going to be talking all things sage grouse, the top 10 things you need to know about sage grouse in about one minute. So um, if you want to ask questions or make comments, it's the bottom uh, right of your screen. There's a talk, let's talk button. And I will be monitoring that and passing questions on to Ryan during the event. So um, I'm going to mute everybody for right now. And or actually I'm not, I'm just going, we're just going to hold for a few minutes at, or for about 30 seconds and get people on. Um, and let's see if we can get a few more tuning in and uh, then we'll get started. Ryan, how are, how are things in Helena today? Oh, it's, it's good. It's sun shining now. It, it sounds like it's raining in Missoula, but uh, rain this morning and sun is shining. It is. And if you want to practice putting something in the chat box, we would love to hear what the weather's like where you are um, so we can see where, you know, what's going on around the state or if you're from uh, some place besides Montana, you can let us know that too. So um, that's been kind of typical spring today, sun and then rain and then thunderstorms. So <laughs> a little of everything. So uh, how are the sage grouse doing, Ryan? <laughs> uh, you know, we, we don't have any in Helena, but what I've heard from my friends and seeing pictures and stuff, everything's normal in the sage grouse world. You know, it's good to know that something's normal somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm glad the sage grouse are out doing their thing. I'm going to wait a minute or two because I know we had some lag time with some of the people who had gotten connection information. So let's just wait a minute or two and, and see um, if anybody who has connected has questions, go ahead and type them in and yeah now we've got people joining in um go ahead and type them into the chat box and i will pass those along to ryan and again if you want to let us know what the weather's like where you are that would be great Okay, we've got a lot of folks joining in. So why don't you go ahead, Ryan, and get started. And I'm sure we'll have some more that will join a little later. Sure. My name is Ryan Schmaltz. I work in the education division with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. My office is at Montana Wild uh, here in Helena. Hopefully you've had a chance to come check out the, the exhibit and the cool things that we have there. But uh, right now we're closed. So uh, I'm actually at, at home right now. And like Kathleen mentioned, this is part of a, a greater program uh, that is our Sage Grouse Distance Learning Program for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Uh, you probably heard the governor talking phases right now. Well, this is kind of second and third phases of, of this program. The first live event was uh, a biologist, uh, Vanna and Laurel. They presented on uh, their studies, what they do, and a little bit about sage grouse. So what we're going to do with this program is kind of follow up on that where we're going to talk about, like I mentioned, the 10 things I think we should all know about sage grouse getting started with this challenge. And uh, the, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the challenge and how you can get involved in, in the end too. So the first thing that you should know if you're going to do the sage grouse challenge is what's grouse. So it seems pretty simple, but I'm going to share my screen right here. I have some pictures to share with you. This is a picture that I took while I was antelope hunting. So hopefully you can all see uh, there, there's uh, some sage grouse right here. And so grouse, uh, there are more than one kind of, of grouse in North America and uh, in Montana we have more than one kind. There's two kinds that live on the prairie. I'll let this question kind of hang out there. If you can put it in the chat box, there's sage grouse and there's one other kind of grouse that lives on the prairies in Montana. If you can answer that question and get it to Kathleen, I'll get you some points. So uh, some other kinds of grouse that don't live on the prairie in Montana, we have uh, dusky grouse, spruce grouse, and rough grouse. Those are birds that they'll live in the forests or up in the mountains. Uh, they have similar things to uh, our sage grouse. They have feathered legs. All grouse have feathered legs. They have big, deep, heavy bodies. They do more walking than they do flying in there. 
they're ground dwellers. So they spend most of their time uh, living on the ground. So. Did anyone get the answer right for the, the other species of prairie grouse in Montana, Kathleen? Um, I am hearing, hang on, hang on. Um, Drum roll. Yeah. Um, Allie, let, hang on one minute, Ryan. I'm having sure. somebody say they don't see any play button on the video. Do you want to maybe unmute your video. microphone? This is just a picture right now. Well, no, I, on the chat. All right. Yeah. Hang on. I am just checking out what's going on here. Be sure everybody can see and hear all of that good kind of stuff. Um, Okay. All righty. Um, are we good? Going on? Okay. Should I, should I start from the beginning or? Hang on just one minute. We've got. Oh, Allie, it's saying that it says restricted. So I don't know if we're having a technical glitch or what's going on. But I want to be sure we can if you're on the chat box right now and you can see and hear us, would you please put it in the chat box so we can know that we're good to go? Just give it a little second. Still checking. Okay. I think we might be okay. Hang on. Oh, okay. We're good. So let's continue. Um, it must be just uh, somebody's firewall that's having an issue. So sorry, uh, Ryan, go ahead and ask your question again. Oh, sure. So did they hear me from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They all right, so uh, in Montana, we have more than one kind of uh, prairie grouse species. Uh, it's not just the sage grouse that you'd find on our prairies, but what's the other kind of grouse that you could encounter? So a grouse that's not a sage grouse, but lives on the prairie. Like I, I mentioned before, if you guys didn't hear, there's uh, many different kinds of grouse uh, in North America and in Montana, we have dusky grouse, spruce grouse, and we have rough grouse. All those have these uh, big, heavy, deep bodies. They're ground dwelling birds, means they're walking more than they're flying. And they, they have these feathered legs too. So hopefully yeah. uh, so, someone has seen this other grouse too, but the sharp tail grouse is the other one. And uh, sharp tail grouse are smaller and you'll get to see a, a video of them here shortly uh, too. So I'm gonna switch back over here so you guys can see our grouse again. Okay, hang on. I'm still getting some people saying they're having a hard time, so. Keep going, that's okay. Yep, go ahead, Ryan. All right, so uh, the picture that I have here is one that our, our friends from out in Eastern Montana just took. It was on the Region 6 social media page, but uh, they were talking about how the sage grouse weren't social distancing. But the second thing that I, I think uh, everyone should know is their unique adaptations. So those are some of their uh, cool powers really that they have and things that are unique from any other birds. So uh, if, if someone's seen a sage grouse before, maybe they can mention some of uh, the adaptations that they are, think are really cool. You can share those in the chat with uh, Kathleen at any time here, but I'm going to tell you right away the coolest one that I think is the, the air sacs. So you can see this bird inflates itself. It sucks air in 
and it fills these air sacs up in its chest. That makes its head almost look like it disappears. Uh, and then these air sacs will inflate. You'll see yellow pouches, and then it'll release that air, making this, this loud popping noise that can be heard from miles away out on the prairie and um, lets them know that they're big and tough. And if well, there's females, um, check them out. So you can see that they, they looks like they have eyebrows. They, they don't actually have eyebrows, but those are yellow eye combs. Um, they, they must look real good to the, the female grouse because they strut those around quite often. You look at their feet and you can see like all grouse we mentioned, their legs have what on them? Feathers, they got feathers all over their legs. That probably helps keep their legs warm. And then something that's really cool about their feet is that they have these little comb-like structures that grow off of each toe forming like snowshoes. So they'll help them walk on the snow and they grow those in the winter and they lose those in the summer. And you can see uh, that they, they fan out and strut around just like a, a turkey would too. So you'll hear the word lek quite often uh, when you're hearing people talk about grouse. And I'm gonna show you a short video of our video producer uh, put together on what is a lack. So you're gonna get to see the sharp tail and stage grouse in action here. There's a sharp tail grouse. Here's our sage grouse. All right, so number four is where do sage grouse live? Uh, there's a map here and you can see that the green indicates where you can find sage grouse right now and the light green indicates where they historically were. It means they're, they're not there anymore. So uh, what you can do is that if your chat box is working, uh, send uh, Kathleen a message. What, what do you think the main reason is they're not found in this place where the, the light colored green is now? Something's obviously changed, right? So uh, let's see if you can get that answer. But uh, as you look around too, one of the main questions we get uh, as we do these school programs with sage grouse is, is do I have sage grouse near my house or near my town? And you can see that there's places in Montana where historically there was sage grouse and they're not there anymore. And you can see that, I mean, if you were to look where the state capital is, Helena, and we, we do not have sage grouse around here, but to the the east, as you get towards White Sulphur, you head southwest towards the Big Hole Valley, uh, you would find them. But uh, some places that they disappeared is in our country over towards, uh, you know, we talk about the areas up in the, the Flathead and the Bitterroot too. They historically were there, but not found anymore. So. so Ryan, we do have a couple of answers and they're pretty consistent. They're saying habitat. It's all about habitat. You know, um, if you look at the main reason why animals struggle or don't do well or disappear, uh, you can always trace something back to something that happened with their habitat loss. So the two main things that they, they always talk about with sage grouse is habitat loss and then fragmentation. So uh, sage grouse like large undisturbed areas, fragmentation could be things like roads, power lines, um, maybe energy development, houses, um, land that was tilled under, uh, broken up. So those are things that could uh, disrupt the, the sage grouse and cause them to, to move somewhere else or not survive. So, right. We, we had someone else say they've died off due to bigger populations of people, I would assume is what they meant. Uh, you can trace some parts of that to that, that answer. Yes, correct. 
So uh, we have habitat right here. So this is sage grouse habitat. This is a perfect place for a sage grouse to live. So I, I throw around the, ha the word habitat pretty loosely, but there's, there's five parts to a habitat, five elements. So together, whatever you guys know, if you could chat those over to Kathleen, the different parts of a habitat, and I'll talk about them as you guys answer those. And we'll talk about what that means and what it is for sage grouse too, so. Okay, so we're looking for the parts of a habitat, right? Yep. Okay. Yes. I am parts ready. Of the habitat. It's lunchtime, we'll say food. We'll start with the, the first one for food. Hopefully, if you guys think of the other ones as we go, you can type those in the chat box. But food for a sage grouse. Number one food for a sage grouse is sagebrush. So sage grouse eat sagebrush. And you can see in this picture here, uh, the habitat that the only place you can find sage grouse is the sagebrush prairie. They need sagebrush to survive. So they'll eat the leaves off of the sagebrush and they're, they have special adaptations that allow them to do that. And other things that they'll eat besides sagebrush in the springtime is things green up, uh, any sort of succulent forb or flower. Uh, they'll graze on things like that too, or a crop they might see, eat sometimes is alfalfa. Sometimes you'll see them in alfalfa fields. But uh, in the springtime, also when the, the young hatch, they're seeking out insects. They, they eat bugs, so they like bugs too. But in the wintertime, the scientists that found that uh, about pretty much nearly 100% of their diet is sagebrush. And in this country in the winter, that's really the only thing sticking above the snow too is the, is the sagebrush too. So really important uh, for their food. Right. Ryan, oh, sorry to interrupt, Ryan, but we've right. got uh, somebody saying water and space. Perfect. There's one left. If they, if they can think of that one, it starts with an S too. But for water, where does the sage grouse find his water? It doesn't look like there's a lot of water out in this country. They can get most of their moisture and water just from eating the succulent sagebrush leaves. So they, they don't always have to go to water every day, but they will visit water tanks and uh, water holes and things like that. Um, to get some water too. Uh, space. So we talked about space for sage grouse. What does that mean? Do they need a place as big as your yard or as big as a playground? Well, no, even bigger than that. Sometimes, you know, hundreds or thousands of acres even. So they like these large expanses of areas I can see in this picture. Uh, they need that space in the connected habitat. Uh, like we mentioned before, they don't like it broken up in little chunks and they don't live in a a small space like a squirrel or robin maybe will live in your yard. So the last one, uh, did anyone get the last one with an S, Kathleen? Um, the, no, I haven't heard that one. All right, so the last one is shelter. So uh, in this country, you don't have, uh, the sage grouse won't go up in those trees in the mountains to find shelter and to hide from predators or storms and weather, they stay in the, the sagebrush. So the, the sagebrush is shelter to them when the elements are bad, but also too, they, they nest there. So they'll actually make a depression and lay their eggs under one of these sagebrush bushes uh, out in an area just like this. So, all right. So sage grouse are not the only ones that live out in the sagebrush prairies, but sage grouse are considered an umbrella species. So what's that mean? It doesn't mean that they, like it's a rainy day, they go find an umbrella or they hide under sagebrush bushes, but it means that uh, if sage grouse are doing well, all these other species that are native and live in the sagebrush prairie are doing well too. So it makes sense uh, the, the conservation efforts that are made to take care of sage grouse because they benefit so many other animals too that you probably recognize in this poster. But if you do know these animals, I'm gonna play a short video. It's gonna dive in and look at their habitat. If you recognize any of the animals in this video, just type them right in the chat box. It starts out with the sage grouse, but then you'll see some of its friends that live in this habitat too. Okay, so I'm going to be watching for names of animals other than sage grouse, correct? Well, they should know the sage grouse when they see it. Right.
All right, so I'll do a quick rundown of those answers. Hopefully you recognized our friend, the sage grouse, but uh, also you got to see a bull snake. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I have, I have guesses, lots of them. Whoa, 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 go, go. Let's see if we, if, if, if you agree. I have rattlesnake and deer. Mule deer, yeah. Yeah, and peregrine falcon. Uh, it was a kestrel, an American a kestrel, a lizard. Uh, yes, a sagebrush lizard. And wait for it. Um, oh my goodness, other birds. Uh, they didn't identify them specifically. So what else was there, Ryan? Uh, I, I checked the first couple here, but there was also a bull snake. We had a rattlesnake and a pronghorn or antelope. And then our state bird, which everyone should know that too. Which is? The metal arc. So there was a metal arc too. <laughs> Great. All right. So the seventh thing that I have that uh, you should know about sage grouse is what's it like to, to be a scientist studying sage grouse? So this is Mark. I think Mark worked with our program in past years too, but Mark's going to talk a little bit about his job and what it's like to work with, with sage grouse in this video. Hey, and Ryan, make sure your uh, volume's up. Yeah, we cannot hear that. So, hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about what they're seeing? Because we can't hear the narration, Ryan. Oh, there's no audio? No. All right, so Mark's talking about uh, his job and how it's really diverse and he does something different each day and how important it is to work with private landowners because most of the sage grouse that we have in Montana are found on private property. So uh, it's really important that uh, he develops those relationships and works hard at them. So. And his biggest takeaway is, is he loves his job and he's a dream job and he has people that want to go on vacation just to work with him. So uh, Mark <laughs> loves his job and he's good at what he does. Great. All right. So uh, number eight is what is it like uh, to be a sage grouse chick? So you spotted them in the, the video that we just had too, where Mark was talking about his job, but uh, here is a, a sage grouse chick. It's tiny, you know, it can fit right in your hand. So sage grouse, when they're born, they're, they're pretty vulnerable, but there's usually four to 11 of these little buggers that hatch. And as soon as they hatch, they'll leave the nest and they'll be looking and getting their own food within hours. Within 10 days, they'll be flying. And if they make it by all of the different kinds of predators that may be after them, you can chat in the box to Kathleen if you can think of some predators that might try to eat a sage grouse chick. Um, but if they can escape all of those predators and make it to be one year old, the next year they can have their own young and be adults. So this is the future of sage grouse and uh, it's important that scientists study them and understand their sur survival too. So that's an important part of the job. And, and you saw Mark uh, and you see on this bird, there's a little wire. It's wearing a little backpack. It has a little tracker on it. Part of the sage grouse uh, distance learning program is you have to track sage grouse to figure out how they use their habitats, how they use the ranch and uh, the obstacles that they have to overcome to survive. So uh, that's a crucial part of it. And uh, a great thing that scientists do to, to help the sage grouse is study them and follow them. Um, one, like of our, one of our listeners, Ryan, said it's hard to imagine that they get much bigger. Um, and then we had a guess on the predator about a snake um, oh. and maybe a mountain lion. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, anything that's a predator would, would eat them. I know kind snakes. Kind of a snack for a mountain lion. Raccoon might eat their eggs, a coyote, a fox, an owl, a hawk, eagles love to eat them. They're prey. If, if you've studied in school about food chains, sage grouse are a species that are preyed upon and the predators do eat them and that is part of their role in the ecosystem and what they do. That's why they have lots of young too. So. Um, and Ryan, this has come up before, and I know you're probably going to talk about it, but um, I think people eat them sometimes, right? <laughs> they're hunting. Yeah, in the previous, um, uh, I, I guess, the program we did earlier today, we had some questions about hunting. And we identified in the beginning the number one reason for their decline, their populations. Uh, they're a species of concern in Montana. They're not uh, endangered. They're not threatened species. Uh, we do have hunting seasons for them. It's a, sh it's a shorter season than other grouse species and you can't harvest as many, but they've done studies and found that, you know, there isn't a lot of people that even go hunting for sage grouse and uh, the hunting, it doesn't have a big impact on their populations and it generates money, you know, and licensed dollars to help out the birds and there's an awareness and appreciation to them. Um, folks seek them out for all different reasons. We have photographers that come from around the world to take pictures of sage grouse. People just like seeing them. They're important to the ecosystem and people like hunting them. So uh, you have those many things in play. Um, people are excited to help out sage grouse. So, um, and then there was another question I think I, I didn't answer that you mentioned then. Did I miss one, Kathleen? Uh, no, I think we're, we're we're all caught up, so. All right, wait. so uh, the next one that we can, uh, number nine, we're mo moving along pretty quickly here, is you can see there's something in the background, that big black thing, and it's not a black bear. So uh, we have almost all the videos and pictures that you see, um, you'll see that in the background with cows, cattle. So sage grouse share much of their habitat, almost all of it with, with cattle. And, um, you know, historically they shared it with bison too. So they seem to get along well with cows and they've done studies and found that for the most part, if there's proper ma range management being practiced and the animals don't overgraze, it can be helpful for sage grouse. Uh, but cows attract bugs, sage grouse like to eat bugs. And then uh, even there's been some speculation that maybe that they'll hang around cows because the predators don't want to come as close to the big cows as as um, if they were off exploring by themselves, the sage grouse. So uh, they, they have a relationship that works out together. And the reason that we still have good populations of sage grouse in Montana is because we have a lot of traditional ranching operations in Montana. And uh, the conservation efforts that ranchers, along with other folks, have, have put together are the reason why you can go into sage grouse habitat and it's not unusual to see a sage grouse still. So they've, they've done many, many things to help out the sage grouse in Montana and uh, cows are not bad for sage grouse. So the, the 10th thing, the last thing that I think everyone should know, um, this is part of the challenge and uh, the question or the last comment I have is what would happen if sage grouse habitat changes or disappears? So mm. really happen, uh, there's, this is, can be broke down in a simple way talking about animals and their adaptations. We talked about sage grouse having a lot of very specialized adaptations. So if, if you're very specialized, um, like a sage grouse to live in a certain ecosystem, if things change, usually don't change with it. Um, usually maybe you move or you don't survive and you end up dying. So uh, that, that's the kind of the cost of being super specialized. And then the flip side of that's generalist species. So a generalist species, something that adapts really well, can survive with a lot of uh, human interactions. It, examples of that would be a Canada goose. Uh, Canada geese do really well around people on golf courses and in parks and things like that. And farm fields, they, they adapt to all that really well. Same with if you went to New York City, you go to Central Park and you see, could see a coyote or a, a great horned owl there. They, they adapt really well and they're a generalist species. So there's positives of being a specialist species, species and there's negative things. So if your habitat changes, that's when your population will decline. So uh, historically, we usually get the question like, well, how many sage grouse were there? Uh, you can read through journal articles and things and they say that there, historically there may have been 16 million sage grouse pre-settlement in uh, the Western United States. That's a, that's a lot of sage grouse. 
Well, now today there could be, uh, you know, 200,000 or a quarter million sage grouse, so, so many less. Uh, sage grouse have cyclic populations, so their populations go up and down depending on conditions. Uh, but there's been a downward trend for quite some time. So that's why biologists and everyone else stepped in. And uh, right now, the, the sage grouse conservation effort is the, the, is the single largest conservation ever in the United States. So uh, industry folks with the, the uh, development, uh, ranchers, uh, government officials, they all came together and they've all done so much. And there's so many programs out there to help sage grouse, all these other species in the sagebrush prairie. And um, it's a special place. And I really think it's one of the last best places left in Montana. There's, if you go out and explore the sagebrush prairie, uh, there's not a lot of people out there. And it's a place that you can still really get away from it all and probably easily socially distance out there. So <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the last part that I wanna leave with, hopefully some of you are kind of inspired by some of this cool stuff about sage grouse. The challenge is kind of that next step. If you guys, uh, communicate with Allie and uh, Kathleen. The challenge basically is going to, I'll show a picture of the, the rancher here. All right. Can you guys see the, the picture of the rancher, Kathleen? Um, no, we're not seeing your screen yet. All right. Let me go back a second. We're seeing your birds. I'm still new with this technology stuff. I'm getting better though. So here's the screen share. All right. Now do you see? Yep. All right, we go see ahead and go from current slide. Yeah. Okay. Or not. <laughs> oh man. All right, we're almost there. I hit the button a lot of times. I'm guilty of that. So that's yeah. Winnie Wilson. She owns a ranch and she looked to fish, wildlife, and parks for advice on managing the sage grouse on her ranch. They're a beloved species of hers. And uh, so fish, wildlife, and parks, or you yourself would take on the role of a biologist and uh, you'll track these sage grouse and you use these data points to plot and analyze the data to learn about the sage grouse, the, the obstacles that they have on the ranch, their seasonal habitat needs, and provide uh, Winifred with a, a simple management plan, a guide to help sage grouse uh, on her property, and uh, hopefully help her with her, her goals too that you'll discover in that challenge. But uh, it, this is a, a neat opportunity for you to take on the role of uh, what a biologist does and get a hold of some real real life data, really. This, this is a simulation, but these are all examples from our biologists of what the sage grouse did and their movements and the things that they encountered that were problems. So it's probably one of the only things I've encountered where you, you get this much information and data to work with on a project like this. So, well, thanks. Great. Um, well, I wonder, do we have any final questions? And um, while I'm waiting to see if anybody's got anything um, that they are just dying to ask Ryan about sage grouse, um, I just want to let everybody know that you can go to inspiredclassroom.com and there's a button on our, our front page that says um, current challenges right now. And if you click on that, you can go and get the information on how to register for um, the Sage Grouse Challenge. And whether you're a teacher or a parent, um, either one, we have opened it up in these crazy times so that if you're working from home, you can uh, work through the challenge and um, learn more about Sage Grouse and, and make some recommendations about habitat. So that's inspiredclassroom.com and it's on the front page. There's a button there and we would be glad to help you. We've got our project manager, Greg Sorbus, who will be glad to help teachers and parents get started. So we've got a question coming in, maybe. <laughs> and we, we have uh, one more uh, event on the 29th. Uh, I think I sent an email at 10 o'clock that will we'll kind of go over the questions for their challenge and then bring someone in with the conservation easements. Oh, I didn't know that. Awesome. Let's put that on the calendar. Would you say that again, please, Ryan, so that they'll know uh, when it is? I'm going to double check. <laughs> I don't want to say it live and then be wrong here. 29th. 29th at 10 a.m. Same place. Yep. Okay. And talking about conservation easements and as, uh, answering more 
sage grass questions on the challenge yep okay well good i don't think we have any other um questions so i am so glad that everybody tuned in i hope you learned a lot about sage grouse and please join us again on the 29th at 10 o'clock and please be sure you sign up and do the challenge it's super fun um, we'd love to see your ideas thank you everybody thanks